In this tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to program a simple RuneScape bot in JavaScript. More specifically, we're going to be using Node.js and the Robot.js library to do GUI automation. And with those tools, we're going to make a simple woodcutting bot. This tutorial is aimed at absolute beginners, so I'll be going slowly, showing you how to get everything set up, and explaining fundamental programming concepts as we go along. So if you've ever been interested in programming or in JavaScript, this project should be a great place to get started. Hey, I'm Ben, and this is Learn Code by Gaming where we learn how to code by playing video games. Before we get too far in this video, I need to start with a disclaimer. My intentions with this video, and with all the videos on this channel, is to help you learn how to program in a fun and engaging manner, not to help you cheat at video games. Cheating is really unfair to the other players, and even more so to the developers of the game. And as programmers, keep in mind that we might ourselves be that game developer someday who has to worry about cheaters inside of our game. So do not run your bot on the official RuneScape servers or anywhere else where it's considered cheating. Instead, I'm going to show you how to develop your code on a RuneScape private server, where the scaling progression is sped up anyway, so we don't have to worry about doing any harm to the game or breaking any rules. If you do decide to run your RuneScape bot where it's not allowed, don't be surprised and don't blame me if you get caught and your account gets banned. The game developers have been catching bots for literally decades, and you've only just begun to learn how to program. The methods I'm going to be teaching you here are pretty basic and potentially easy to detect. So with those words of warning, let's get into it. JavaScript has always been a popular language with new programmers because it's very easy to get started with. All you need is a web browser. Every modern browser can run JavaScript. So let's write your first line of code. If you're in Chrome, right click anywhere inside of the web page and go down to Inspect. In the window that pops up, go ahead and click Console. You can do almost the exact same thing in Firefox or even in the Edge browser. This is the JavaScript console. You can write and run JavaScript right from here. If we type in 3 plus 4, hit enter, uh, we get the result. You can also call a function like alert. We'll say hello. And when I hit enter on this, it's going to show a pop-up. And there the alert pop-up says hello in it. JavaScript is the language of front-end web development. So any programmer who wants to work on the web needs to write a little bit of JavaScript at some point. That's another reason why JavaScript is a good place to start learning, because most programmers will need to know it eventually anyway. Now, for the woodcutting bot we're going to write, I'm going to teach you a technique called GUI automation. This is a technique where you write code to automate mouse movement and keyboard inputs, and you use information from the screen to make decisions about what your code should do next. If you've seen my tutorial series on PyAuto GUI, we're going to be using the same concepts here, except we're going to be doing things in JavaScript instead of Python. In order to use GUI automation, we won't be able to run our code inside of a browser. That's because browsers come with protection that prevent code from controlling a user's mouse and keyboard. This is a good thing, because could you imagine if the websites you visited could control your mouse and keyboard? And that would be awful. So we need some way to run our code as a desktop application that has permission to control our mouse and keyboard. To do that, we'll be using Node.js, a very popular JavaScript runtime that's used by professional developers all the time. So you'll want to download and install Node.js from their website. It's nodejs.org. And the homepage should give you a link to the recommended download for your platform. In my case, that's going to be the 64-bit Windows installer, uh, the LTS, which is long-term support. I'll go through and install this with you. And when you get to this screen, you're going to want to check this box, automatically install the necessary tools. If you don't, you'll get errors when we try to install the robot.js library. So that probably took a little while, but when it's finished, let's confirm that it was installed correctly by using the terminal. On Windows, I prefer git bash, but you can also use PowerShell. And we're going to enter the command node space dash dash version. And when you enter that, it should just output the version of node that you installed if it installed correctly. If I've lost you, here's how you would do it on PowerShell instead. Right click on the Windows icon and open up PowerShell. And the same command should work here, node dash dash version, and you should get the version output. If you're on Mac, the program to search for is just called terminal. And keep your terminal window open because we're going to use it again in a minute. I'll keep PowerShell open. Now let's talk a little bit about how code gets written. When we write code, we're just writing simple text files. And our code later gets interpreted or compiled into machine code when we run it. 
so you don't need anything more than just Notepad to write code. But most programmers don't write code in Notepad. We use a special type of application called an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. These are really just fancy Notepad programs that make programming easier and more enjoyable, with features like syntax highlighting and autocomplete. So first I'm going to show you how to write and run a simple program just using Notepad and the terminal. And then for the rest of this tutorial series, I'm going to be using an IDE called Visual Studio Code. And after you've seen it done both ways, you can decide for yourself if you want to install VS Code or just continue to use Notepad. It'll work fine either way. So in Notepad, let's start by typing console, and then dot, and then the word log, and then parentheses, and then quote. And then in here, we can type in any sort of string that we want to output to our console. So the classic string is hello world. Remember to close your quotes, close your parentheses, and then we end this statement with a semicolon. And then when you save this file, let's go ahead and make a new folder for this project. I'll call mine woodcutter. And then in that folder, we're going to save this file as index.js. Make sure it doesn't save as a text file. You can go down here and select all files so it saves as a .js file. I believe you can also, in Windows, put quotes around it so that it saves as exactly that file name. So what this code should do when we run it is it should print out the string that we gave it to the console. Earlier in our web browser, we checked out the console tab, and that's where this message would output if we were to run it inside of a browser. But we're going to run this code with Node, so in this case, it's going to output to our terminal window. So you'll see what I mean. Uh, go back to your terminal. And the first thing we need to do is we need to change directory to the folder that we just created for this project. So right now I'm in my, my home folder, the Ben folder, and you can type the letters ls and then hit enter. And this will list out all of the folders and files in your current directory. Uh, so right now I need to change directories to my desktop and then the woodcutter folder on my desktop. So to do that, I'll type cd for change directory space and then the desktop folder. And you can type, after you've typed out part of the name of your folder, you can hit tab to autocomplete. And then inside of desktop, I want the woodcutter folder. And then after you've got that full path, you can hit enter. And you can see the path to the left of your cursor should now contain the full path to the folder that you want. And if we use the ls command again, we'll see inside this folder it just has one file called index.js. So now we can run this code. Uh, just using node, type in node space and then the file name of the file you want to run. Here it's index.js. And when you hit enter, you can see that it runs, it outputs the hello world that we were expecting, and then it exits the program. It's also not necessary to have that dot slash in front, node space, just index.js will also work just fine. So now I'll show you how to do the exact same thing in VS Code. So with VS Code open, I'm just going to go ahead and open that project folder that we already created we see that our index.js file is already in there. So we can open that up and we can see our code there. And you can see this looks exactly the same as before in our notepad program, except now we have this nice syntax highlighting. And in VS Code, we have an integrated terminal. So you can open that by going to view terminal. And in here, I can just type the same node space index.js to run our code. And you can see we get the exact same output as before. It's just telling us hello world. So if you'd like to use VS Code, uh, it's a free download. I'll put a link to it in the description, or you can just Google search Visual Studio Code. And I'm not going to walk you through the whole setup for VS Code, but I do want to point out a few things. In the integrated terminal, I'm using the git bash shell, uh, but you can also use the PowerShell from inside this terminal just fine. Also, you'll probably be seeing me use this Run Code button up here in the upper right to run my code. And this is an extension called Code Runner that you can install if you want. I go over to the extension section and you'll find it there. And all it does is, is it runs the file you have opened with the node command that I showed you before. Also, if you like my color theme, uh, the theme I'm using is called Nord, which you can also find in the extensions. All right, so now you're all set up to write JavaScript and run it with Node.js. The next thing we want to do is set up our project as a Node.js package. This will allow us to install the robot.js library as well as any other packages we might need. So in your terminal, enter npm init, 
dash y. This will generate a package.json file in our project folder. And npm stands for node package manager, and it was installed when we installed Node.js. And with npm init dash y, we just ran the npm initialization command. So go ahead and open the package.json file. And in here, feel free to set your project name, the description, uh, the author. And this isn't necessary because we won't be publishing our package for other people to use, but you can still do it if you like. So now we can install robot.js. And this is the library that will make it easy for us to control the mouse and keyboard and to read the screen. So again, back to the terminal. This time we're going to type npm install and then robot.js. And if you get any errors that look like this, that means that you didn't check the automatically install necessary tools when you set up Node.js, so you need to go back and repair that. But if robot.js does install correctly, you'll notice that several other things have changed inside of your project. First, we have this package lock file. We also have a new folder that says node modules. And this node modules folder is what contains all of the packages that you install with NPM. Also, in your package.json file, you'll now see that there's this dependency section and that robot.js is now a dependency for this project and it needs at least this version. Now let's confirm that robot.js is working properly. So in our code, the first thing we need to do is import the robot.js library. So I'm gonna leave a comment here with a double slashes. Import the robot.js library. And when I import this, I'm going to save the import to a variable. Then I'm gonna use the require keyword and it's just called robot.js. Now end it with a semicolon. I'll explain this code in greater detail in the next video. Right now, it's fine to just follow along. I'm just verifying that robot.js is working for you. So now that it's imported, let's change our log statement to just stay starting. And then we're going to have a end statement. Let's just say done. And these are just debug outputs to help us figure out what's going on inside the code. And then let's try moving the, the cursor to the upper left-hand corner of our screen. Uh, so it'll be robot to access that library. And then inside that library, there's a function called move mouse. And then we're going to give it the coordinates 0, 0, because those pixels match up with the upper left-hand corner of the screen. So when I run this, what I expect to happen is I expect my mouse to move from where it is on the screen uh, up to the upper left. And I expect that to happen instantaneously. So let's run this code like before, uh, node index.js. Make sure your mouse cursor is somewhere in the middle of your screen. And then when you run it, uh, if robot.js is installed properly, you should see your mouse cursor now in the upper left-hand corner. All right, so we're finally ready to start building our bot. The last thing you need to do, if you haven't done so already, is get a RuneScape private server client installed on your computer. For this tutorial, I'll be playing on iCov, which you can download from iCov.io. Another private server I recommend is Dreamscape. But any private server that allows this sort of botting should work fine. I appreciate everyone who leaves a like, and remember to subscribe so you'll be notified when I release the next video in this series. And in that next video, we'll start writing code for our woodcutting bot. So let me know your hype level in the comments, and I'll see you there.